Hey, this is Eran Stern with the second part of our telenovela soap opera opener for Afterista. And in this part we will animate the shapes that we copied from Illustrator here in After Effects. Before we will start to animate, let's first address the problem that we see here on screen. You see, every place the letters meet, there is a gap between the junction of the letters and this is due to the reason that when we paste mask from Illustrator into After Effects they are all coming at a difference mode. Here let me show you. I will select in the timeline the vector art and we see that each mask has a different color because we change it in the user interface preferences in After Effects and when I will drill down this letter we will see here under mask that we've got 18 masks, different masks, and all are coming to us in a different mode. So in order to fix this, for example, the place where the F and the T are meeting, we need to change the correct mask, and it is very simple here to see because we see the green represents the T from difference to add mode. Now we have to do it for the rest of them. So you can toggle back and forth and see this is the letter E. So I will change it to add as well. And also I will go to mask number 12 and change its mode to add. I will do the same for number 13. I will change it back to add. And I will scrub down and choose mask 15, 16 and 17. And all together I will change all of them to an add mode. So they will add one on top of the other. Now if we will look on our creation, all the letters represented themselves very good and now we don't see the gap where the letters are meeting. Okay, we can pan up and close this layer, make sure it's selected and let's add in effect generate the stroke effect. Now here in the stroke we need to change it from mask one to all masks. Also make sure the stroke sequentially is active and take the drop and just sample the brown from the layer color. Now change the brush size from 2 to 1.7 and change the paint style from on original image to on transparent. Now if you will scrub the end value you can see that it's drawing itself on the screen. Okay so make sure you're at frame number 0 and change the end value to 0. Place a keyframe at this frame and let's move on to around 215, something like this, and change it back to 100. So now if we will generate a quick run preview, we will see the letters are drawing themselves on the screen, which is wonderful. But I want to make it a little bit more artistic than the simple line or stroke animation. So let's stop the run preview. And first we want to change the layer mode from normal to an add. So this will actually shine the letters onto the screen. And now let's select the vector art layer and duplicate it three times. You can either go to the edit menu and choose duplicate or just duplicate it with the shortcut control or command D. Now that you have uh, four duplicates, we will rename them accordingly. The first one I will rename original. The second one will be spikes. The third one will be color and the last one will be fill. So we want to do an original spikes, color and fill passes that we will redraw our afterista on screen. Let's select both the fill and the color layer and change their blend mode from add to color burn. And for the moment, let's shut down the eye for them. We will concentrate here on the spikes letters. And what I want to do here is just create a little bit of a roughen edge feel to this. So I will select the layer named Spikes and go under Effect, Stylize and add the roughen edge effect. Now I will change the edge type from roughen to spiky and see this looks already very much like a Spikes. But I think that we will decrease the border from 8 to something like maybe 2.7. And it will just make sure that it's not too spiky. Also, let's go to the beginning and in the evolution, let's record the keyframe. Now let's go to the end of the timeline and just make sure that we will do a four full revolution. So now you can see if I'm scrubbing the timeline, it just give a better life to this text. 
Okay, now you can open up the eye for the color and the fill and make sure you select the fill layer and let's change the stroke attributes here. First, we need to change the paint style from on transparent to reveal original image. And now we need to change the brush size in order for us to see the letters. And I will say somewhere around 8.4 in my case. So now we can see all the animation comes together. And the only thing that we need to do is just to shift the layers that they won't start at the same time. So let's choose the spike layer and make sure we are around seven frames in our timeline, somewhere like this, and just shift it a little bit to the right. We will do the same for layer number four, in our case, the color layer, and the fill layer, layer number five. And now if we'll generate a quick RAM preview, we will see that we will start with the original, we will add the spikes, then the color comes on, and then the fill will fill the layer. Okay, looking at our ramp review, we see we've got a couple of things to take care of, something that we need to fix. First, I think that it's pretty much obvious that the letters here, when they start to redraw themselves on the screen, just doesn't make sense that we will start to see the T here, the line of the last T, and we will fix it very shortly. And also, I think that if we will go back to the spikes layer, we should raise this from maybe 1.7 to somewhere around 3. It will just add more spikes to the out and just make the letters glow a little bit better. So now let's deal with the second problem, which is the T here before it's time. In order to fix it, we need to split the layer into two. The first will be the A, F, T and maybe E letters written on the screen and then the rest of the word. And this will help us to avoid this error that we see with the F and the T colliding. So choose the fill layer and just duplicate another copy of it. It will rename itself fill2. Make sure the fill2 is under. Then select the first fill layer. And let's just make sure we will see it full screen because we want to open it and choose all the unrelevant mask for it. So here I will just divide it to two parts. So I will choose from mask 18 until mask 10 and just delete those. Then I will open fill number two, open its mask and do the same but vice versa, meaning that I will select mask number one until mask number nine and I will delete it. So we have mask number one to nine on the first fill and mask number 10 to 18 on the second. So now it's very easy because all we need to do here is just make sure we select both of the fill layers and I will hit U in order to see the keyframes. And this will be the first keyframe, this will be the last keyframe. So for the first layer, I will just stand here in the middle, just drag the end one over here. This is the keyframe for the stroke effect. And I will start the last one, which means the second part from here until the end. And if we will generate a quick run preview right now, we will see that this helps us to solve the problem. And you see, this is our final version. It looks very nice and I really love the spikes and the rusty feel to the afterista look. Now what we can do in order to spice it even better is add some text and maybe some motion design elements. So let me press on the shy icons, which will reveal the text layer that I already prepare. And let's open the eye for it. And you see here it says, Afterist, of course, is the soap opera for After Effects lovers. And I think that this title should start just before the letters are ending. So around three seconds, I will just make sure that this will be the in point for the text. And let's add a quick two text animators in order to make this title join us in a very nice and organic way. So I will drill down the triangle for the text and I will choose to add two animators. One animator for the scale and additional animator for the blur. Now I will make sure that I will uncheck the link for both of them and I will change the Y value to zero and I will change also the Y value for the blur to 100. Now I will choose the range selector place a key from here when I am at three seconds and let's move to I think like two seconds should be enough five seconds in our timeline and just reveal the text 
So this text animator will make the letters appear from zero scale here in the Y and from 100 blur value in the Y as well. So it just gives a very, very nice effect. So let's see how both elements work together. And we can see the Afterista logo writes itself on the screen and then comes the text. And I think it makes a really nice effect. And the only thing that I think missing here in order to really sell this shot and make it a opener and a real promo and now we'll just close this one and make sure that we are seeing all the screen is maybe just add the growing elements. And for this, you have a wonderful resource on the cow itself. So here in the creativecow.net, if you go under library and just search for making elements grow, you will end up with this wonderful tutorial of my friend from Las Vegas, Jace Hansen. And you can also check his website to see more stuff. And I really recommend to see this tutorial and take notes from Jay's approach. Uh, I already took care of it for you. And here inside our solid folder, I took Jay's project and just make a render out of it. So I want to take this Jay's grow element and just drag it to our composition. And you will see the element is already rendered as a quick time movie with an alpha channel. So now we want to make change for it and just place it on the right spot. So first I think that we need to scale it a little bit down and I think it should be somewhere over here. I'm not so keen with the black color that I use for the render. So I will choose this JS Grow element and under Effect, Generate and add a Fill effect. And let's just again sample one of our colors here. And we will change the layer mode from normal to screen. And now we hardly see it. So we can, again, make sure it's still selected. Go under layer and under layer style, choose outer glow. I will drill down the outer glow parameters and change its blend mode from screen to multiply. Now I will go under and just change the size value to something which will be very much obvious to the eye. And you can also change the glow color. So if you like, for example, to sample from our design, and it really makes these two elements working very nicely together. Now I can close this J's grow element. And again, I want this to start from the beginning, but maybe we will duplicate another copy. Now scrub to where the text begins and choose the second copy, hit R in your keyboard and just change it from zero to 180. Now take the second copy and just place it under the text and you should eyeball it to somewhere that you think that it is good in your design, in your eye. We also want to shift the second copy to the beginning of the text. So just find the place that the text begins and just shift it in the timeline to the right position so it will accompany the second line of the text. And now we're pretty much done. So you can go back to the first frame and generate your final RAM preview. So you see, with a little help from Illustrator and Jace, of course, we managed to design this lovely promo for our hero Afterista. I would say this was a muy fun tutorial. So until next time we meet, this is Eran Stern for creativecow.net saying Shalom.